Recording today with respect for Dr. Richard Lumsden, a scientist, a Christian, and a Southern gentleman. I read in 1997 of the death of Dr. Richard Lumsden, a man I barely knew. It was my privilege in July 1994 to meet him at the International Conference on Creationism in Pittsburgh. Dr. Lumsden obtained his post-secondary and graduate education at Tulane, Harvard, and Rice Universities where he received his doctorate in cell biology with postdoctoral training in medical pathology at the Tulane Medical School. He served more than 20 years on the faculty of Tulane University as a professor and research scientist. He had authored over 100 peer-reviewed research articles, a number of reviews, texts, and technical monographs. He had served on the editorial boards of several international journals and had received numerous professional awards, scholarships, fellowships, and research grants. His appointment had included those of panelist and or reviewer of research grants and programs to the National Institutes of Health and other agencies. When I met Dr. Lumsden at the 1994 International Conference on Creationism, he was chair of the biology department at the Institute for Creation Research, where he served from 1991 to 1996. I had attended Dr. Lumsden's paper on the paradox of the cell surface membrane in which he concluded that integrated structural and functional complexity of extant plasma membranes provides yet further evidence of purposeful design. After I attended Dr. Lumsden's paper presentation, I was hoping for a chance to meet and talk with him. A couple of days later, on July 21, 1994, I found Dr. Lumsden and myself in the conference cafeteria eating at the same table. I was curious about his life and how he wound up at ICR, so I started asking him questions. As he responded, I started scribbling notes on napkins, three brown ones and one white one, pulled from the dispenser on the cafeteria table. To this day, those napkin notes remain in a file drawer in my home, and the conversation got more interesting as we went along. I asked, Dr. Lumsden, have you been a creationist very long? His reply, oh no, I was an atheist and evolutionist most of my life. I didn't view creationists very well and gradualists were anathema to me. I was a professor at Tulane University, but I didn't treat creationists too rudely because, after all, I was I was raised a southern gentleman, and southern gentlemen just don't do that. I then asked, So, how did you become a Christian? His reply, One day I gave a vainglorious lecture on the origin of life, all about evolution. It was kind of, it's kind of a thing of the times. It was during the Louisiana law business, so it was a topic of interest. I quoted Oprah and Huxley, you know, the students ate it up. Students love blasphemy. After class, a girl came up and said to me, uh, she had some questions. She said she didn't want to argue with me. She just wanted to get her science straight. After about three hours, I had talked myself out of evolution. So I just put it out of my mind. But you know, the more you try to put something out of your mind, the harder it is. It just keeps coming back like a bad penny. In one year, I found myself on my knees before a saving altar accepting the Lord Jesus. I then asked, what about the student who had spoken to you a year earlier? His reply, I knew she had taken a class in evolutionary biology, so I asked the professor in that class about her. He told me she had gotten an A in the class, but she had just driven him nuts. She graduated and then went on to complete medical school. I met her again one time. She had heard by the grapevine that I had become a Christian, and after our hugs and hallelujahs, she said, you know, Dr. Lumsden, I prayed for all of my professors, but you got extra time. Last I heard, she was a medical missionary in a jungle somewhere. I asked, what do you see as the key scientific evidence in support of creation? Dr. Lumsden replied, I think the key point is complexity of design. You know, Darwinism is not intuitively obvious. You have to be taught it. You have to be educated into believing stuff that only a Ph.D. would believe. I asked, well, since that time, how has your life changed? His reply, very simply, for the better. I asked, how has your science changed? Dr. Lumsden replied, it makes more sense now. Those membranes make more sense now, I'll tell you that. I asked, and your personal life? His reply, when you know where you are from, you know who you are, you know where you are going, and you know with whom you are going, it changes life a lot. Being an atheist is really scary. 
There was a lot of tension that wouldn't go away. It was hard to sleep at night. I suppose there were quite a few more words in our conversation that I didn't have scribbled on my napkin. Just recorded those that were on the napkins to make sure that I really got my record straight like the girl was trying to get her science straight. But as of September 2015, you could watch Dr. Lumsden's personal testimony on YouTube. Sadly, he passed away in 1997, three years after our conversation in Pittsburgh. I hope you'll take time to watch the video and show it to high school students, college students, and to university professors.